Hey everyone, Lou here. First, I'd like to apologize for the AC sound in the back. It's currently like 100 degrees outside and I'd rather not die of a heat stroke while recording this, so AC is gonna have to stay on. Anyway, since so many of you loved my Ranking Project Sakai Characters video, I thought it'd be really fun to do a video ranking pretty much every Vocaloid ever made. <laughs> Okay, I know this is going to be a massive task here. I mean, as you can see, there is a lot of Vocaloids here. Uh, by the way, I made this tier list, and down below in the description will be the tier list if you want to use it. This is currently updated to Vocaloids 1 through 6, uh, just so that way there is everyone. And if there is a new Vocaloid released, I will go back and update this to include new Vocaloids. So... Let's get started, and I apologize if I get any names wrong, I'm doing this unscripted, so uh, when I'm doing something like this, I tend to fumble over my words a lot, um, and I tend to slip up with names because I don't have something helping me keep concentrated, so I apologize for that in advance. Now, let's get started. First up is Prima. Now Prima is interesting because she is a operatic voice meant to basically only sing opera or the soundtrack to Phantom of the Opera. And while she does sound great, uh, I'm not a personal fan of opera. Uh, pretty much getting Prima to sing non-operatic songs is quite the task and I appreciate Anybody who can make Prima sing a normal song where she doesn't sound really weird. Uh, there is one by Marvin Valentin that I really, really liked with Prima. And then, um, which the name has completely slipped my mind. I mention it in my Vogue America video. And uh, there is an amazing cover with Tonio and Prima singing The Phantom of the Opera from the phantom of the opera <laughs> so uh you know those two songs i think are prima's max potential there but i'm not a personal fan of operatic voices i'm also not a fan of a lot of her fan designs because they're either way too boring or don't fit at all because they draw her like a, a little girl or lolly character and i don't understand why um so for me i'm not a huge fan of prima Love her box art though, I think the lady there is very elegant looking even though it's just a stock photo. So I'm gonna put Prima here just because I'm not a fan of her basically like recommended potential and there's really only two songs with Prima that I genuinely really really like. Next is Gumi, my girl Gumi. A lot of my favorite Vocaloid songs are with Gumi, actually. This includes like Echo, Poker Face, um, uh, the Seven Deadly Sin song about her Wrath character, uh, which the name has completely slipped my mind. Um, you know, there's quite a few Gumi songs that I really, really like. Also, Gumi has amazing collaboration songs like Matryoshka. So I, I love Gumi. Her voice is great. Uh, I love her voice provider's uh, voice in general. Now, I've never seen, I believe it's called Macross. And that's where Gumi's voice provider comes from because she voices the character Ranka. And that's why Gumi is designed the way she is. It's a tribute to Ranka. And um, I really love the song for Macross, like the really famous one. Um, I don't know if I can sing it without copyright issues right now, but um, I really, really love Gumi. She's one of my favorites. So Gumi's going in S tier. She's also very easy to tune. Uh, I love a queen who is easy to tune, expressive, cute design, top tier queen. Next is um, Arsloid, I believe his name is. Uh, I don't know why his name has completely slipped my ma mind. I'm pretty sure it's Arsloid. So uh, Arsloid is interesting because his voice provider is from a Vocaloid dance group. If you want to get really weird in your Vocaloid trivia, um, he is actually one of the dancers in the video plus boy by Dale or is it Giga I'm not sure who does plus boy off the top of my head but um yeah he's one of the dancers in there and that's a thing um Ars Lloyd is kind of just meh like sometimes he sounds like a couple of other guys here on this list like sometimes I hear him and he kind of sounds like Kyo from uh Zola Project uh who is in here by the way I swear he's in here it's just 
you know, a lot of vocaloids. Um, so yeah, and I'm not a fan of his design, you know, it's just, it, it feels like a bootleg of Sukasa from Wonderland Showtime, which is saying, which is kind of weird to say when, you know, Ars Lloyd came out first, but I don't know. His personality is just not my thing too. He's like, you know, the rebel, laid back, talk shit to the teachers kind of character, according to the um, dance group that Ars Lloyd's character is from. Uh, so yeah, and his he does have a second voice bank, but his second voice bank is literally dog shit because it was only ever meant to cross synthesize with his main voice bank. And so you lose a lot of potential with Ars Lloyd because of the fact that his second voice bank literally is broken and shitty. So that's unfortunate. Although he's not terrible because I have heard some decent sounds with him. I'm gonna put Ars Lloyd here. Uh, so yeah. This is Akito, he, he I believe it's Akito. He's uh, one of the newer um, V6 voice banks and um, I really, I got to play around with his voice in private because obviously I have Vocaloid 6 and um, I really like his voice. I think he has a lot of really, really good potential here. Uh, he's, the problem with Vocaloid 6 is that it's just really difficult to tune uh, due to the way Vocaloid 6 is handled and the fact that each note has to render so it takes a really long time compared to other vocal synthesizers out on the market right now. But I still really like Akito. I think he's a really great voice. Uh, I love his color scheme. Uh, teal is one of my favorite colors probably because of this bitch right here. So, um, so I like him. Uh, design wise, he technically doesn't have one. Uh, because it's just a silhouette, but I like a lot of the designs I see. Uh, I tried to come up with my own in MMD. Uh, I'm probably gonna show it on screen here. It looks gosh awful because it was like the alpha stage as I call it. I, I didn't prepare anything for that model. I'm still working on it and I hate every outcome. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put him here. He's not bad. I like him. Okay, next we have Alan. Now, I really like Alan's voice. Uh, Chris is here on this list, and I feel like Alan is basically what Chris wanted to be, but couldn't. Um, you probably all heard of my, not all of you, but probably some of you have heard my cover of In Your Eyes by The Weeknd, and I used Alan as the voice. Uh, I guess you could say it's a re remake of a cover I did with Cyber Songman. Uh, I really like Alan's voice. I feel like he has a lot of really great range and potential. So Alan is pretty cool. The only thing is his name sucks because when I wanted to look at fan designs, I kept getting Lin's character from Story of Evil. So that's a thing. But yeah, I really like Alan. He's a, he's a, a good voice. He's not perfect, but he's good and that's why he's going in B. Amy is next. Now, Amy has an amazing voice, at least from the demonstrations uh, I heard from uh, Yamaha themselves. Now, I tried with Amy. I'm not really good at her. I, I don't know, maybe it's just her style of singing I'm not really good at because I'm not really good at like soul or R&B style singing because uh, I am J-pop trash, uh, I don't know. But uh, Amy does have a really good voice. I'm just a terrible <laughs> Vocaloid tuner, I guess. Design-wise, uh, at least from the design that Yamaha shows here, she is a little plain. Um, she kind of just looks like a person with earrings, like, kind of boring like there's no fancy outfit uh the only really thing she has going for her are these pink earrings but i love a lot of fan designs where they give her like these really cool like jackets that are like all silvery or sleek you know really cool character designs like that that really like oomph her and make her look more like a proper vocaloid when you compare her to a big lineup of other vocaloids so yeah i like amy she's good uh she's just something really difficult to tune. Uh, I guess it's like a cyber diva situation for me. So I'm gonna put her here. This is Anan, I think. Uh, Anan and Kanan are twins, but uh, I could never tell them apart, despite them being fraternal twins, because I am bad with names, as you could probably tell from this video already. So uh, Anan is the softer voice, while Kanan is the louder voice. Um, 
So, they're okay. I mean, their designs aren't my favorite. I like Anand's haircut. It's cute. Um, their voices are cute. They're just cute. Like, they're okay. They're not my favorite equally. So, I'm gonna put Anand here. Now, I used to really, really like Aoki Lapis. Uh, she was used to be one of my favorite Vocaloid designs, but looking back on it now, she kind of just looks like a rejected Clannad character to me because of the art style. And, um, there's something about her voice that like kind of irks me sometimes. I don't know if it's like certain covers, people not knowing how to tune her right, or maybe she just sounds too high pitched, but I have to appreciate her because she was the inspiration for my Utao Kotone Yose. You know, I gotta appreciate my inspo board, but, um, you know, she's, her voice ain't the best. She kind of sounds like a chipmunk sometimes, but she's okay not the worst but okay and that's why she's going here avana i love avana uh porter robinson has made some incredible songs with avana one of my favorites being um sad machine adore that song uh a lot of my favorite um vocaloid producers do amazing songs with Ivana. I adore her voice. She sounds so gentle. Uh, one cov covers I really like are when they do like Celtic songs with her or um, I don't know I don't know what the name of this one is but it's the one where it starts like there will come a soldier who carries a mighty sword or something. I, I'm sure you guys know the name of that song. I really like that song and Ivana is like literally the perfect voice for it. I love her design as well. Her Irish influence is just lovely. She just, she's a Celtic queen and I love her. She's not my favorite though, just because she is a bit choppy. And because of that, it makes her sound not as great as she could. Uh, I feel like Ivana definitely deserves not a Vocaloid vo new Vocaloid voice pick because she's too good for that. Um, I definitely feel like she deserves a synthesizer v voice bank even though i know her company said they're no longer making voice banks but a girl can dream so ivana is going up here i love her now azuki is interesting because her and her friend matcha are from a series called gogo 575 and they were technically not vocaloids uh only because they didn't have official commercial voice banks when they were first announced uh, they just had like a baby version of Vocaloid in their um, uh, PS Vita game and that was weird but then for Vocaloid 4 we were blessed with voice banks for the both of them and Azuki is one of my favorite voice banks to work with. Uh, the same way people describe Rana as being super expressive, easy to work with, and adorable, I feel the same way for Azuki, and I'm sad not a lot of people feel the same way. She is just so cute. I love her design. I love her voice. I just adore her. As you could probably tell, I use her a lot in my older Vocaloid covers. She's just great. I love her. She's going here. She's not perfect, though, if only because sometimes when she hits certain notes, she can sound a little metallic. That's okay, but just know that I love this girl. Big Al, or more like Big Yikes. Um, Big Al is weird. Uh, he was supposed to have uh, a voice actor who did, or voice provider who did uh elvis impersonations and so his voice was going to kind of sound like elvis i guess if you've heard the infamous power fx demo of the original big al but unfortunately his voice provider couldn't record anymore uh due to scheduling conflicts so somebody else who works at power fx i believe he's either a producer or uh, something like that because he actually did a tutorial on uh, Vocaloid 2 I think on Power FX's YouTube channel it was super weird um, because he I'm not kidding he was not singing when he recorded Big Al there is no way because Big Al when he quote unquote sings sounds like he's talking and that just makes Big Al for me a no because that is a bitch to work with when a voice bank sounds like they're talking because then you have to find a way to basically pull something out of your ass to make him sing 
uh, there's only very few people I've seen that can make Big Al actually sound like he's singing. Even Circus, when he did the song Detrimental with Tsuru Makimaki, uh, Big Al was not singing. He was uh, doing rap, which is like talking almost. So as you could see, uh, Big Al, <laughs> even to the best producers, impossible to work with. I don't hate his design though, I, I like this one in particular that I'm using here, which is his official art on the PowerFX website. Um, it's kind of like a Frankenstein thing, it's cool, I like it, it's okay. Um, it's one of the designs I prefer more, I hate his Taiwanese voice bank, it is just so messy and weird and I don't get it. Um, but you know, he's okay, um, he's not terrible. Only because I've seen people do some good shit with him, but, you know, most of the time he's Big Yikes instead of Big Al. Bruno, now we don't normally talk about Bruno, but we're gonna talk about him. Uh, I really like his voice actually. I don't get to hear Spanish Vocaloid songs a lot, um, mostly because um, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, and, um, most Spanish Vocaloid users don't really put subtitles in their videos, at least from my experience. That, and it's usually- Bruno is usually covering songs I don't know very well, or I don't know at all. So, I- I don't, um, know what the original sounds like to know the vocal comparison. Um, but I've heard a lot of really good covers with him, and I like his design, he looks super chill, like, he's hanging out on the beach and stuff. Really, really nice design, I like him. So he's going here. He's not my favorite, he's not meh, but I like him. Now next is Chica. I love Chica's design, I think it is very cute, it reminds me of the series Nana, which is one of my favorite manga and anime, and, um... I know a lot of people say she sounds like Gumi, and sometimes, depending on the person, she kind of does, but in my case, I don't think she sounds like Gumi at all, um, at least not always, and I just really love her design, she is just so cute, when I look at her, I see such a creative design, and in a sea of Vocaloids, you know, creative designs, you have to make sure you, they stand out, and I think Chica does, and that's why Chica's going here. I don't have her, but uh, if I ever did, that would be fun because I would love to try and draw that design for covers. Next is my man Chris. They did Chris so dirty. He has a great design, like really great design, and I've seen a lot of people like rework that design to be even more stand out, and they look amazing, but Chris's voice is, my god, terrible. Like. I, I don't know, like, he, he looks like he has such the potential for a baritone voice, which, you know, we don't really get too many baritone voices in the Vocaloid community, you know? We don't have an, a comparison to a vocal uh, synthesizer v-voice bank like Asterion in the Vocaloid community, and I thought that's what Chris would be, but then he wasn't, and he doesn't even... I mean, no offense, of course, he just doesn't sound like a man. He sounds like a girl sometimes, at least from the covers I've heard. And for that, I feel like Chris is max wasted potential. Terrible, almost. Uh, so I'm going to put Chris here. I'm sorry for Chris lovers, but sometimes these higher ranged male voice ranks just they don't do it for me and they are wasted potential to me especially when again we don't have a lot or any baritone voice banks in this pool here next is clara i love her voice uh, i pretty much have the same feelings for her that i do bruno if that makes sense great design great voice uh, i just don't listen to songs with either of them a lot because there are covers of songs I don't know and without subtitles so I don't know like what the original vocals sound like or the appeal but you know I still really like her so she's going here this is Cole Cole design wise is okay she kind of looks like a rejected Madoka Magica character um, but voice wise uh, I feel like Cole sounds really 
scratchy, if that makes sense. Like she was recorded on something that was scratching the mic, so she sounds like really muffled and like kind of metally. I don't know how to describe it. She's not my favorite. There's only really one song uh, that I like with Cole that I've ever heard, and it's Freya.sis. Uh, I can't remember producers for the life of me right now, but I'm sure you all know that one. Uh, I actually really love that song. Uh, and she is the only, <laughs> that is the only time where Cole actually sounds really good to me. But maybe it doesn't help that Gumi is there to back up her, you know, lack of power and, you know, Im impressiveness. So, her design is meh, her voice is meh. I'm gonna have to put her here and I apologize to Cole fans. Now, Cyber Diva is a queen. I fucking love the design Crusher P made. I think she looks amazing. But voice-wise, Cyber Diva, from my personal experience, is a bitch to work with. Cyber Diva has a similar situation to Big Al, where she sounds like she's talking, and that's a bad thing. I feel like sometimes I can get it to work. It just, she requires a lot of experience in the Vocaloid editor. And because of that, it makes her a bitch to work with, but I love her design so much, and I love a lot of the outcomes I do with uh, songs I do with her, which is basically I make her do Lady Gaga songs only. <laughs> um, like, I really like the cover I did of Sour Candy by Lady Gaga with Blackpink. I really like the way that turned out, and I thought Cyber Diva sounded okay, not my best work, but you know, when you love a character design, it makes the absolute ass that is tuning her worth it. So, Cyber Diva goes here. Cyber Songman is my man. I fucking love his voice. He is so easy to work with, thank goodness, because he is much easier to work with than Cyber Diva. I love making him cover weekend songs. He just sounds so perfect. I love his range. His character design is awesome i love the designs fans come up with too he's just amazing he's one of my favorites and he's going up here i love him dinah um okay so here's the thing her and dex are voiced by aki glancy and no straight answer otherwise known as kenji b and uh zero g told uh aki glancy that uh in order to match Kenji B's more powerful singing, she had to sing as powerfully as she could. And Aki Glancy is an extremely soft singer, and because of that, it makes Dinah sound underwhelming. Because Dinah was supposed to sound powerful like Dex, but then it makes her come off really soft and sometimes genuinely very flat. Like, I've heard a lot of songs with Dinah, and Outside of Circus P, because I guess Circus P is just the master of tuning at this point, um, I feel like not a lot of people can do Dinah right. Even Ghost, I've seen struggle with Dinah. She's just... I don't know how to describe it. She's just, voice-wise, not my favorite. I don't know if I'm not a fan of Aki Glancy singing, or if I found her work recording Dinah just wasn't as good as Dex, but yeah, and her color scheme is genuinely all over the place. It's red, white, and blue. Um, and those cover colors are fine on a flag, but, you know, putting them on Dinah along with, you know, black and white as well, it just makes her look very messy by comparison, not to mention the orange hair and tail. Color scheme-wise, she just looks very messy. And I don't know, maybe it's a combination of her voice and her design, but Dinah is not my favorite and that's why she's going here dex though a lot of my favorite vocaloid songs feature dex like patches by circus p honey i'm home by ghost like i could go on and on at this point but let's just say dex is top tier his design also feels a lot smoother too if that if that makes sense like he is primarily black and white and his pop of color is his scarf and that's really great because it helps him stand out more by just that little pop of color. Whereas Dinah is all color. 
Uh, so that makes Dex a lot more breathable, if that makes sense, as a character design, instead of being so cluttered like Dinah is. That, and he is a wolf, which color scheme-wise makes him a lot easier to translate because everybody does human wolf designs, while Dinah is a fox, and foxes, color scheme-wise, are very messy to work with because it's orange, white, and black. And while you see a lot of fox character designs, uh, Aki Glancy wanted to include her favorite colors, and so you combine that and it's just a disaster, so... With Dex, on the other hand, it's, he's not a disaster, he's really good, and someday I hope to get Dex, because I love his voice so much, and he's going here. Kaito, I don't think I need to state. I love Kaito, he's one of my favorite Vocaloid voice banks. I know everyone is mean to him and says he sounds like Kermit the Frog, but I love Kaito's voice. A lot of my favorite early Vocaloid songs that I heard uh, were Kaito songs. I love his design. I think his blue scarf is just adorable. I love a lot of the fan, des fan personalities people come up with for him, that he's like the dad of the group. Uh, his personality in Wonderland Showtime is one of my favorites. Uh, if you guys have seen my Vocaloid headcanon video, you know how I perceive Kaito, which is like airheaded himbo dad. Yeah, I just... I love Kaito, he's one of my favorites, and I think Kaito holds a lot of potential. I think it's just that people just uh, hear his English when you don't tune it and they go he sounds like Kermit the Frog and trash on him, but I love Kaito. Fukase, I love his design, his design is so creative, it's, it's so cutely horror, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, another thing is he's voiced by Sek- uh, one of the singers from Sakai no Awari, which is a Japanese band, and uh, I am a personal fan of Owl City a lot, and they did a song together called Tokyo, and um, I love that song dearly, so uh, whenever I hear Fukase's voice provider singing in that song, I'm like, oh my god, it's Fukase. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, just... I love Fukase's voice. I love a lot of songs people do with Fukase. Um, Color Bars and Broadcast Illusion were one of my favorite ghost songs for a really long time. So Fukase, best boy. I also love the memes people do with him and that he's a dumbass shit poster and it's great. Um, so Fukase is going here. Gakupo, do I even need to say it? Do I really need to say it at this point? You guys have been on my channel long enough, you know Gakupo is my all-time favorite Vocaloid ever made. He is not only designed by one of my favorite mangaka, his voice is incredible, he's so easy to work with, he sounds so expressive, he has multiple voice banks, top tier best Vocaloid. I don't know what y'all are doing if you don't have Gakupo yet. Literally one of the best. I fucking love Gakupo with every fiber of my being, and I wish Internet Co. gave him the same attention they give Gumi. Galico is okay. That's really all I can say. I like her hair. I like that she has like a little rainbow bang going on, and then the rest is normal. Um, the only song I've ever heard with Gakupo is Galaxius, and it's a cute song, catchy. I remember I used to really like it as a teenager, like I would sing it all the time. But, um, I don't know, Galico just feels very meh to me. Like when I look at Galico, sometimes I don't even recognize her as a vocaloid, she just looks like a character someone drew on Twitter, testing out designs. So, she's going here. Um, not my favorite. Sometimes a little messy in design, depending on which design of Galico you're using. Um, so yeah, Galico is just really meh. Haruka, um, I haven't had the full chance to use Haruka a lot. Um, I haven't really been messing with Vocaloid 6 as much as I probably should be. Uh, because I've been messing with Tato Synthvi a lot lately, because I love her. Um, but Haruka is very very nice i love her voice um her color is not my favorite because yellow is my least favorite color to work with in a fashion color palette which is maybe a little hypocritical when uh two of my other favorite vocaloids you'll see here in a second um use yellow in their design but um 
I think it's just the outfits I see people do Haruka with are like very not my style. Uh, I do like her voice though. She is nice. Um, I know she is just a silhouette here, but genuinely Haruka is not bad. She's mid, if that makes sense. Haru no Sora, um, I believe she's voiced by Michiru's voice actress from the original dub of Sailor Moon Crystal. If I'm remembering correctly, I might be confusing that with Lumi, but um, pretty sure it's Sora though. Um, Sora's voice is very nice. Uh, I've, I mean, Eternity, Eternity, I think it's called. It was uh, the ending for Sailor Moon Crystal season three. Um, it's one of my favorite ending songs for Sailor Moon. Um, and so I know she sings very, very well. I think it's just, I don't know, feels meh to me. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I think her little character story or character gimmick thing is that she's a drama teacher or something, and that's cute. I don't know if it's her, like, design or what, but she feels very forgettable to me, and I don't get to hear her voice a lot because not a lot of people use her. I guess they kind of are on the same thing as me. So yeah, I just don't feel very excited about Haru no Sora. Um, she's kind of, I don't want to say disappointing, but it's really meh. So she's going here. Ia. Now, I used to really, really like Ia back in the day. Um, not because Ia was in a lot of songs I liked, but simply because I think Ia's design is very, very pretty with like her, you know, casual like outfit and then her beautiful flowing hair and like her like sort of um curious but like ethereal kind of expression just really good um i feel like first place did her dirty though with the chevio engine she sounds exactly like a bootleg one for some reason like if you compare ia's vocaloid voice banks with her new Chevio voice ranks, it doesn't even sound like the same fucking person. Like, I've questioned if she's still voiced by Leah, but, um, I do think Ia is a classic, though. I love her design, I love her voice. Her English song, Conqueror, is one of my favorite, um, Chevio songs. Probably the only Chevio song I really like, so she's going here. If only because her super soft voice isn't always fun to work with when you want to do songs with uh, more power to it, at least from my experience. Oh my gosh, I love Flower. Now Flower is also a bitch to work with because Flower is so powerful that she tends to sound extremely flat, especially with long notes, but I still really love Flower's voice. Uh, a lot of my favorite Vocaloid songs are with Flower, like uh, Appetite of a People Pleaser by, Sir by Ghost, and then recently Better Off by Circus, which is literally one of my favorite Circus P songs right now. Um, I also have done some really great covers with Flower, or at least what I think is great. Like, um, I really liked quite a few songs I did with Flower. Uh, I didn't like my Chainsaw Man opening one. That was I could have done better with that one, but... You know, I've had a lot of fun working with Flower. I also draw a flower a lot because of covers, so I like Flower. Flower is going here. Kaiyuki, I adore this girl with all my heart. Now, the only thing with Kaiyuki is that because she is a child, it makes it difficult to do songs with her because, at least to me, it gives me the ick if I made her sing like Romeo and Cinderella or anything by giga p if you know what i mean um like if i made kayuki sing plus boy or pump and circumstance like that's a child and that gives me the ick uh so no don't do that with kayuki i think that's against her terms of service actually because of that it makes her difficult to do covers with and even certain songs because she is a child. However, there have been some really, really great songs lately with Kayuki showing that you don't always have to write about the horizontal tango with a child. Um, like, Lag Train is literally one of my favorite Vocaloid songs right now. I know I keep saying that a lot, but, you know, 
I just have a lot of favorite songs, I guess. This is why I'm never doing a favorite vocalite songs list, because it always changes. But, um, Kayuki, I love her voice. Her voice is so cute, so sweet. But then she can sound, like, really emotional, too. To me, I feel like Kayuki's max potential is Lag Train, just because she sounds so amazing there. So, Kayuki... Even though I can't do many songs with her because she is a child and it gives me the ick to do certain subjects with a child, um, she goes here. I love her design. She also reminds me lately of Nanako from um, Persona 4 Golden, which uh, I've been playing a bit lately for review purposes. So, Kanon, same feeling I gave earlier. I'm putting her and her sister here uh, because my feelings are the same for both. Kaori, um, she has a good voice. Um, I just want to know what the fuck is with these designs for Vocaloid 5. I don't know why they look like rejected background characters from the series reboot. Or like, some kind of like, I don't know, lost attempt at making human models in 1998. But she, they all look terrible, <laughs> these models. Fan designs wise though, a lot of people have made some really good designs for Kaori. Um... I think it's just her voice just doesn't really stand out to me as much. Maybe because she sounds so much like VY1. Um, maybe so that's why she's mad to me. So she's going here. Ken, oh my god. I had way too much fun working with Ken when Vocaloid 5 came out. Uh, I made a lot of covers behind the scenes with Ken. Uh, one of my personal favorites was the first opening for Attack on Titan. Oh my gosh, so much fun hearing the power in his voice. The only problem is, again, uh, Vocaloid 5 and Vocaloid 6 have a problem where the engine wants to basically recompile every time you do something different with the smallest note possible. And so it makes tuning take forever. But because I love Ken so much, it's worth it. And he's going here. Uh, for design-wise, by the way, I used Suzunosuke's design for Ken because I love it. And I think it's the closest to, like, the vision I had in my head of Ken. So, yeah. Kizuna Akari, um, I love her voice. She's fun to work with. It's just sometimes she can sound really, really light. And it's to a point where certain songs feel a lot harder to work with. But she's really great for softer songs. I love her, like flight bomber jacket thing it's so cute she's just a very cute character that and i really like the little um funny video i did with her demo talking voice bank uh mostly because i think it was one of my first few videos to blow up and i it made me really excited so kizuna akari is going here because i love her design and her voice is fun okay so next is matcha now, the thing about matcha is I just don't get the same serotonin that I do when I work with Azuki. I don't know if it's her voice just doesn't hit the same. I don't have her as well, so maybe that's it too. Um, but she's nice. She's just not a vocaloid that I'm a huge fan of, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's the green, maybe it's... who knows, but... She's going here, because at least she looks cute standing next to Azuki. <laughs> Kokone is next, and Kokone is interesting, because if you notice in Vocaloid 6 now, when Vocaloids hit certain pitches now, they sound more powerful, instead of sounding the same, but higher and struggling to breathe. Um, and Kokone was kind of like the test for that. Because Kokone is interesting in that the higher you went with her voice, she would actually activate her falsetto mode. So instead of having a separate voice bank, she had a built-in falsetto mode, which is interesting. Um, I don't know how many people used that function. I'm sure it was interesting to work with. Uh, her design is very messy, though. I am not a fan of this design. It kind of feels all over the place, but I appreciate what she did tech-wise, because it would be used later in Vocaloid 6. So, Kokone is going here, because she's not the worst, because her voice is very cute. But she's not mi mid-tier either, she's... you're going in C, honey. 
Kyo, um, now I'm not a huge fan of the Zola project, despite the fact that you would think it's my bread and butter because it's a boy band, but I don't know, there's something about the Zola project, a lot, other than Kyo, um, Will and you just don't hit the same when they sound by themselves. Um, there's only really one person who has made Kyo sound like genuinely good to stand on his own, and I think their name is Neo Dios something. Um, they did a really good cover of Gomenne Gomenne by uh, Kikuo, and um, that cover was really, really good. They've also managed to make Kyo growl sometimes. I think, despite the fact that Kyo has no growl ability at all because he's from Vocaloid 3, so the potential with Kyo is there. Design-wise, um, there are multiple designs for Kyo because the whole thing about Zola Project was that fans came up with the designs. And some of them are okay, some of them are god no. The one I'm using here is just okay. I feel like the one that channel I'm referring to uses is the better design. Um, I just didn't use it just for consistency sake with the Zola Project boys um, because also used my favorite design for you is in here so um, yeah so he's going here. I like Kyo. He's just I feel like maybe not a lot of people know how to use his potential. Kyoteru is Kayuki's teacher and Kyoteru, I thought, was a very mid voice bank for a very long time. Uh, in fact, maybe lower than mid. Uh, even now, I still have a hard time liking Kyoteru's voice. Maybe it's because a lot of people don't use him. Um, you know, design-wise, he's very boring. <laughs> I mean, he's just a guy in a suit until his Vocaloid 4 voice bank really upped his design, made him look all nerdy, and then he actually got a power voice bank with an amazing design and even a little bit of personality since something about uh, Kyoteru has a band and uh, when he takes off his glasses, he switches personalities and something tells me that's a reference to Uta no Prince-sama, because I swear to you, there is a character in Uta no Prince-sama with the same thing. Um, but yeah, um, Kyoteru, he's okay. Uh, I prefer his, like, rocker design, but, uh, yeah, he's going here. He's not terrible, he's just not someone I find interesting. That's all. That sounds mean. Next is Sweet Anne. Uh, yes, I used her Hellfire design, uh, despite the fact that I really like the steampunk design of a, what I believe is her Taiwanese release. Um, Sweet Anne's box art is Hellfire itself. I don't know why they went with this design when it looks like she stepped on a Lego in the middle of hell in a conversation. But uh, also, she looks like when people ask how I'm doing, so that's a thing. Um, Sweet Anne's voice is okay. I feel like Sweet Anne is one of those ones where she does sound very flat, but she also sounds very muffled. I mean, she was the first English female Vocaloid voice bank for Vocaloid 2, so I get why she doesn't sound as good. Um, I do love her other designs more. Uh, I just use this one because it's hilariously awful. But yeah, she's going um, here. If she didn't have a decent voice, she'd probably go here, just because that design is, dear god, a nightmare. Len, um, a lot of- I'm going to say this again, but a lot of my favorite Vocaloid songs are Len songs. But the thing is, Len is a character I just don't really gravitate to as much. I don't know if it's just because I'm not a fan of most young boy characters, because, I don't know, I guess just the charm of cute small boy uh can only go so far compared to like cute goyle design when like you can get like i don't know a little more creative with the design i don't know maybe it's the fandom too uh when i was a teenager a lot of girls my age at the time were obsessed with len and maybe that had something to do with it um but len design wise i feel like my favorite Len design is actually his Servant of Evil one. 
uh, just because I feel like that does stand out a little more. Uh, Project Sakai wise, I think one of my favorite personalities is Vivid Bad Squad, just because I like the sibling dynamic between him and Rin there. And he acts more like a fun-loving boy, and it makes him a little more tolerable. That, and from my personal experience, uh, Len is a bitch to work with sometimes, because I'm not good at young boy voices. So, he can be asked to work with. But I do love a lot of Len's songs, and honestly, for me, it's a skill issue. I Maybe, for me, I think it's a skill issue. Uh, because there are a lot of people who do incredible songs with Len. So Len is going here. Leon, uh, I had to use one of my favorites. Uh, I know there are a lot of more uh, accurate designs for Leon out there, um, but some of them said don't share the design around in videos. Um, others, uh, I couldn't find the source for. Uh, so uh, this Leon also is a classic to me. This is the Leon design that I saw a lot as a teenager when I was first getting into Vocaloid. So I just can't help but love this design also because of the memes. Leon is the first male Vocaloid voice bank and you can kind of tell because um, you can tell the engine struggled with a deeper masculine voice. However, despite that, people today have done a lot of really, really great songs with Leon. Uh, there was one cover of the song Get Lucky that I thought was really, really good. So despite Leon sounding a little crusty, I'm putting him here. Lily, um... The thing about Lily is, I love her design, I love the rocker design, I love the long blonde hair, I think it looks amazing. Voice wise, um, she kind of sounds a bit nasally to me, at least to me. However, there are a lot of songs with Lily I fucking love, like Reverse, Air, um, there's another one but I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Lily though, great, she's just not my favorite though um so lily is mid to me she's mid lola now lola's interesting actually in that she was the first female vocaloid ever as well as the first vocaloid ever featured in a theatrical soundtrack as she was featured in the soundtrack for the film paprika voice wise lola has never been my favorite um i'm not sure why design wise um they're really all over the place with Lola. Anything you can think of, people have probably done that design for Lola. And it makes sense. I mean, she is just a pair of lips on the box art, so you can kind of go crazy. But, um, Lola is just... Okay. Luca, we stand a queen in this household. If y'all don't stand Luca, um, Luca's English voice may be a bitch to work with. Krypton did her dirty with her V4 voice spank. Her V2 was top tier. But you know what? Despite the, the shortcomings Luca has had to face, we stand a pink queen in this house. Just like people stand for the flag, we stand for Luca. And we all hope someday Krypton stops doing her fucking dirty. Lumi, honestly, she has one of the most beautiful designs I have ever seen in a Vocaloid. Um, mostly because I'm a really big fan of aquatic designs and I think her jellyfish inspiration is just beautiful. And the song Itsuma Demo by um, Crusher is genuinely a beautiful song and it shows her max potential. So for me, I'm putting Lumi here. I don't have her, but I have considered it several times. Lu Tiani, um, I've never been a big fan of her. I think it's because I can tell they're trying really hard to make her the Chinese equivalent of Miku Hatsune. Um, but I appreciate what Luo has done for the Vocaloid community, considering Luo has had an anime attempt, she's been featured in Genshin Impact promotional videos, she's been in KFC commercials, like, you think of it in China, and Luo Tiyani has probably sponsored it, so I greatly appreciate what she's done for the vocal synth community. I just wish her voice was better. So, Luo is 
mid to me. Now, I know Mak Ne Nana Petite is just Mak Ne Nana, but um, Mak Ne Nana is weird in that she has very strange lore, in that she has a little sister who is a tiny version of herself, quite literally, who is a Kudere, and uh, so that is why Mak Ne Nana Petite is considered its own separate voice bank, rather than just fucking with the gender settings of Makate Nana. Um, but I like her design. I think her design is just adorable. I specifically love the V4 design for both the Nana girls, um, or both the Makne girls, I mean. And, um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of the extremely high-pitched vocals. Sounds like Aoki Lapis, if you ask me. So Makne Petite's going here. However, I love Makne Nana's Japanese voice bank. I'm not a fan of her English one. Um, I don't think Makne Nana was supposed to sing in English. Uh, not because her pronunciation is bad, but just because her style of voice I don't think works in English very well. Um, because it sounds like Sonika, uh, who I forgot to put here, who I will put after this video, um, if you guys want to know where Sonika would be, it would be here. Because I fucking hate Sonika's voice and design. So, um, just pretend Sonika is here. However, Makne Nana's Japanese voice bank is very cute. Her designs are extremely adorable. I love the way that they managed to make almost a humanoid version of a Mac computer. It's really cute. Uh, so for me, Makne Nana's here. I would never personally use her voice bank, but every time I see her design somewhere, it makes me smile. She's so cute. Micah is, I'm going to say this again, in a lot of my favorite Vocaloid songs. Um, she's in the song Cosmonauts with, uh, VY1 V4, I think that's the one used. And, uh, she sounds amazing there. I love Micah's potential as, uh, a Spanish Vocaloid who has different consonants for different languages. So, for a lot of people, they say it's very easy to get Micah to sing in English, Italian, and even French. So, for me, Micah is a queen. She goes here. She's not my all-time favorite. Just because her design is just a smidge messy with the big pigtails and then the busy chest design but you know i love micah i wouldn't use her though just because i don't know what i'm doing with uh spanish vocaloids i still don't know what i'm doing with um my only chinese voice bank so mayu i i love her design so much the rainbow gradient in the back is so cute i am a huge fan of gothic lolita um her voice is okay the only thing i am genuinely not a fan of with Mayu is the Yandere gimmick, uh, mostly because Yandere are not my thing. They're kind of meh, kind of bleh. So for me, Micah is, or not Micah, Mayu is mid. Okay, next is Meiko. Now, Meiko, I feel, gets a lot of disrespect from Krypton Future Media. Not so much the fandom, but Krypton Future Media has done my Red Queen dirty. I love Meiko. Not because a lot of my favorite songs are with Mako. A lot used to be with Mako. Um, there are a lot of songs I'm not a fan of anymore just because I think I overplayed them too much. But design-wise, I love Mako. And Mako is so important as the first female Japanese voice bank. I mean, without Mako, like 80% of this list wouldn't be here. So, you know, you have to respect a queen. And in this case... Mako is queen. That, and I love Mako's potential here. She has multiple voice banks. She can sing in English, and while her English isn't very good, there are a lot of ways you can do Mako, and I have Mako myself, and it is so much fun to make different songs with her. She just has a massive range to me. Merle, I think, has one of, again, the prettiest vocaloid designs. Uh, Voice-wise, though, not my favorite. Uh, she kind of sounds like a muffled Mako to me, uh, or at least a muffled higher pitch Mako. That, and I feel like the company who made her kind of did her dirty when they said that she was the quote unquote evil design, uh, evil or dark design of Aoki Lapis, which 
I thought was very mean when nothing about her design says evil and she doesn't look evil, but okay. Um, that and there are issues with that that I'm not gonna say why that's a bad thing, but for me, I'm still gonna put Merle here just because that design is absolutely beautiful. I love butterfly designs as well as aquatic designs, so her having these beautiful butterfly sleeves is just 10 out of 10 gorgeous. Mew, I think, is very, very interesting design-wise. She's all in black and white, and I think the artist did a really great job with Mew. She just looks so cool. I don't know how to describe it. She just looks really badass. Voice-wise, I think they could have done better. Um, I don't know what it is with Yamaha, but when they do their own new female voice banks, they just end up sounding like VY1. Not sure why. And that's kind of what Mew sounds like, so... Unfortunately, I'm gonna put Mew here, because design can only take you so far when you sound identical to somebody else. Miku Hatsune, you all know, I love her. She's a queen. We stand a teal queen. Um, genuinely though, I feel like Miku is one of the best voice banks to work with. I love working with Miku, and I know that Miku has been very, very very oversaturated in the vocal synth community and krypton did her dirty with her nt voice bank um i have her nt voice bank and it sure is something uh if you guys have seen my tiktok i did a cover of miku nt singing the oshinoko opening and um i wasn't personally happy with the results but i just wanted to show miku's latest you know voice bank what it sounds like so Anyway, um, Miku's design, I've always loved. Um, personally though, I prefer her V4 and NT voice banks just because I really love the more, um, I guess you could say, like, freer and, uh, flowy movements of it. I love her hair though in her NT design, which is why I'm using it here in this, um, ranking. Uh, so yeah, I love Miku. I know that maybe it's a bit generic to put Miku here, but who doesn't love Miku? Except people who ate oversaturation and maybe 2013 hipsters, but you know. Next is uh, Mirai Komachi. Um, the only Mirai I wish we got a vocal aid for is Mirai Suenaga from the Culture Japan Company, but that'll never happen. Um, this Mirai, though, is disappointment. Uh, her design is meh, she sounds like a bootleg Rin, and, you know, for a Vocaloid made by Namco, you would expect something just a little better? A little more iconic? I mean, it's Namco we're talking about, so... I'm putting her here! I just don't like Mirai! Um, I wish she was better, but she's not. Next is Miriam. Um, now I know Miriam is not featured a lot, I know people dunk on her saying she sounds like Oliver, but I love Miriam, I think her voice is really pretty and I absolutely love the fan designs people come up with for Miriam, like they're amazing designs, they're so pretty. Um, so for me, Miriam is going here, I would never use Miriam because I am too terrified to work with Vocaloid 1 because I am not skilled enough with it, but I still love Miriam, so. Next we have Jiu Moke. Uh, he is actually my only Chinese Vocaloid voice bank, and although I love Jiu's voice, um, he is a bitch to work for me because I don't understand how the Mandarin alphabet works, but that's okay. I still love him. I don't do many covers with him for that fact. I don't know how the Mandarin voice bank works, but I still love him anyway. Was it a waste? Maybe, but I love his design and I love his voice, so it's worth it. For me, he is one of my favorite Chinese voice banks. This one, I had to actually stop recording to pull up her name because I did not want to embarrass myself. Um, this is Mo Xingxiang. I don't hear her a lot. I think I've only ever heard Circus use her. Um, her design's pretty messy. Not a fan. She's just mid to me. Not a fan of the yellow outfit. It's kind of hideous. Uh, so I am sorry, Mo Xingxiang fans, but she is going here. Oliver, I 
love Oliver's voice. Even though he doesn't have a lot of range, Oliver has some of the best Vocaloid songs and he has such great potential and I love his design so for me, Oliver is going here. Next to his sister, <laughs> Miriam. Which I guess you could say is his sister since everyone loves to make jokes about how Miriam and Oliver sound similar. Even though they don't to me. Next is Pico Utatane. Um, now I used to really hate Pico when he first when I first heard his voice in covers and I think it was in I think Shoto Shota Island was the first time I heard Pico's voice. Um, that and he kept reminding me of Boku no Pico, which um you know, that's a sad thing to be reminded of. That's that's war flashbacks if you ask me. But over time, I've really grown to love Pico Utatane's voice. I love the potential he has, how he can sing really deep and then really high. I wish other male vocaloids had this potential, and so for me, he's going here. It's only because I find his design a little messy with the ear things and then the USB tail. I mean, I get it. He's supposed to be a comparison, like a- He was originally supposed to be like the male counterpart to SFA2 Miki before their company split the designs in two and gave SF2, SFA2 Miki to AH Software and gave Pico to Sony, but you know, I can still be disappointed with this design a little bit and find it messy. Next is the newer boy, Paul Uta, uh, or I guess just Porter Robinson at this point. I love Porter or Paul Uta's design. I think Paul Uta has an adorable design. I love his hair. I love his outfit. That, and I'm a huge fan of Porter Robinson's music. Um, the only thing is that yes, it is really, really high pitched and what we would call the nightcore voice. But uh, despite that, I think it works for Paul Uta. I think it's because Porter Robinson does songs like that, that it just, it works. It just works. So for me, I, I think Po Uta is genuinely very, very good. Would I use his voice bank? No, just because I don't know how to use that Nycore voice myself. Uh, but if I ever did, I would like to experiment and see, can I get him to sound like a normal dude, which you probably could. People just really love experimenting, and I think that's what Po Uta really does good at, is getting people to experiment, which is really cool. Rana, um, I was actually hearing one of Circus Peace songs with Rana the other day, and Rana is genuinely, she has a very, very cute voice, but the problem for me with Rana is just her design is so messy, like, rainbow and pink and while i love rainbows and pink um it just doesn't work for rana she just looks very messy but voice wise she is very good and that's why she's going here din do you even need to ask din is one of my favorite voice pranks ever most of my favorite songs are din songs i could go on and on I love Bean's design, I love her voice, I love her characterization in Project Sakai. Rin is just 10 out of 10, a pure 10 out of 10 here. And yes, I just realized that like all the Krypton Vocaloids, or almost all the Krypton Vocaloids are here, so it's almost a Krypton bingo. But yes, Rin, one of my favorites. I, I love Rin, I love working with her, 10 out of 10, pure 10 out of 10. Her and Gakupo, top tier voice banks to me. Ruby, um, I, I love Ruby's voice. I love how expressive she is. I love how powerful she is. The only thing is that she has a V-flower situation where it can be very difficult to get her to sing expressively when she's so powerful that it comes off flat. However, I love Ruby regardless. I remember being so so, so hyped when I first heard Ruby's demo and patiently waiting after that and then being just fucking destroyed by whatever the hell was that Sims 4 design for Ruby and then being over the moon when they brought back the better design which was by Natasha Allegri who's like a animator for Adventure Time I think? Regardless, I love Ruby. Her design, her voice, even her voice provider is a cool person so Ruby is going up here. Now, Sachiko is interesting. Um, 
because design wise i think she is very very beautiful and voice wise she holds a lot of potential but the problem is that sachiko i feel fits a very niche voice style in that um sachiko is basically for a lower female range of singing and that's not very common for a lot of producers in the vocaloid community who prefer higher voices um just so that way it sounds more powerful uh because a lot of people don't see that lower female ranges can sound powerful too like meiko um but regardless i love sachiko um i've heard a lot of really 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 great covers with her so for me sachiko is going here i wouldn't personally use her um also people do her dirty and say she sounds like a female gakupo which is rude but you know sarah i love her voice her design is pretty because it's purple and purple is one of my favorite colors um it's kind of it i don't have much to say on sarah i guess uh maybe because i haven't used her much so i haven't heard her full potential but i do genuinely really like her so see so you literally my favorite korean voice like i love uni's design uni is literally one of the best or i guess the best korean vocaloid designs but siyu has such an adorable voice she's difficult to work with yes because her japanese pronunciation is not the best um i don't use her korean because i don't listen to a lot of k-pop but I still love Siyu. She's adorable. I mean, I think her cat ear headphone things are extremely creative to me. So for me, Siyu is going here. SFA to Miki. Now, I'm not a huge fan of her voice outside of Circus P's music. Um, I feel like SFA to Miki sounds a little too metallic for my taste. Um, but for me, because I like her design and Insanity is a very good song to me, I will put her here. Also because, um, I really like her V4 design just because it reminds me of a swan and it's pretty. So yes, she's going here. Next is, uh, Stardust. At least that's her English name. I completely blanked on her name in China. But, um, Stardust has one of the best synthesizer V voice banks. I love Stardust's voice in Synthesizer V, but her Vocaloid voice, from the little I've heard, because Stardust was not really sold in the States because she was a Taobao exclusive and you need a lot of complicated, expensive shit just to purchase her from China, so yeah, Stardust, almost nobody has her in the West and outside of China, so I don't I, I hardly have ever heard her um, Mandarin voice bank, but she's pretty. That's why she's going here. Only because, you know, she was a she's a bitch to obtain, according to everything I've ever heard on Stardust. But I think her design is beautiful. So ah, uh, our favorite scam artist and criminal, Tohoku Zunko. Design wise, Tohoku Zunko's cute. She's supposed to be a shrine maiden made of edamame which is cute but um i don't know i think her voice is just too soft for me uh i've heard some people do good songs with her she sounds cute in her anime but i don't know the hoku zunko is just meh especially when you compare her to like her sisters and her other friends in her franchise that her company uses to scam people, so for me, Tohoku Zunko goes here. Now this is interesting, this is Tonerion, and um, she had an extremely different redesign for Vocaloid 4, uh, but I kind of like her like design here, which was her original V3 design, and she was supposed to be like a Vocaloid 100 years in the future, which I guess that meant slap everything futuristic on her and hope people fall for it but um she's not my favorite uh both designs uh are really not my favorite i just prefer the vocaloid 3 one just because it's nostalgic to me even though both are very messy not a fan of her voice um it sounds way too nasally i'm sorry tonadion fans but she's going here tonio 
is interesting because he is the male uh, counterpart to Prima and it's the same situation as Prima but I feel like some people do Tonio a little better than Prima. I don't know if it's because uh, people found the potential in his more baritone range so they were able to use that at its max potential and give us some baritone vocaloid songs because we hardly ever get that. That and his design, uh, I do prefer it a little more just because I think the guy in the box or the stock image guy is at least a little handsome, so he's going here. This is Uni. Uh, Uni for me, uh, I like her voice. I wish she got her Japanese or English note. She was supposed to get an English voice bank, never did. Uh, disappointing as fuck for that. I love her voice bank. I remember when she first released and they announced she was getting an English voice bank. I remember sitting there just like hoping, keeping my fingers crossed that, you know, they would announce it and I would get it and I'd have fun, but I can't have fun in the community. So Uni is going here only because she never got her English voice bank and I'm sad. So I never got to use her. Una Otomachi is one of my favorite vo vocaloid voice banks to work with. She's like Rin for me, where she's just so expressive and easy to work with and has, you know, great voice banks and I adore her design. I think it's so cute how her sweet voice bank is like a marching band and then like her power voice bank is like this cute little rock star girl. And she has a lot of really, really great outfits and she's just great. I love Una. She's top tier. Next is, um, Unity-chan. I don't know why I forgot her name for a second. Uh, I don't like Unity-chan's voice. I don't like Unity-chan's design. I think her dis her story is edgy. Um, I'm sorry to everyone. I just don't like Unity-chan. And so she's going here. Uh, not sure why I put flower twice. Um, I think it's- I think I might have messed up. And I might have- accidentally put V Flower twice instead of Sonica, but if we pretend it's Sonica, she's here. Just saying. This is v, uh, VY1, a fan design, because uh, VY1 is just a fan. Um, I have VY1 and I never touch her. Uh, she came with Vocaloid 4 and because I find her voice after a while to be very, very boring. Um, uh, so VY1 is going here. VY2 on the other hand, I fucking love VY2's voice. Um, some fan designs are not my favorite. Uh, his design is literally just a sword. So some people go all out with it. Some people go meh it uh this design though called roro by uh put it on screen because i am me and i don't remember off the top of my head but yes i love vy2 one of my favorites um his voice is amazing um i adore this pink design so much so vy2 is going here uh i forgot to put hime i guess like i said by the time this video goes up this tier list will be heavily fixed um, to fix any mistakes I made where I, I clearly forgot Sonika, Hime, and I put V-Flower twice for some fucking reason, so. So, Mikoto, I guess you could put Hime and Mikoto together since they're a pair. Um, Mikoto, though, I love her design. I love her voice. Um, I'm specifically very proud of my cover of Rolling Girl with Mikoto and my Circus Monster cover with Hime. So for me, they're not my favorite just because Hime is harder to work with because she sounds very metallic. Uh, but Mikoto sounds incredible, so for me, they're going here. This is Will from Sola Project. I don't like Will's voice. I don't like Will's designs. Every design I've seen for Will is either ugly or messy because they give him a terrible, terrible short choppy cut that looked like he cut it with scissors um, backwards face like backwards or something it just looks terrible okay it looks terrible fashion wise um clearly no one has ever looked at visual k ever when they look at these designs so for me i'm sorry will fans but he's going here this is Xinhua. I remember when Xinhua first came out, I fell in love with her design and I wanted her so bad, but because of 
Chinese Vocaloid voice banks being notoriously difficult pre-V4 era. Um, I could never get Xinhua, uh, also because I was scared. I didn't know how to use her voice bank, and I was right, because I still don't know how to use Jiumoke's. But, um, when Xinhua got her V4 voice bank, I literally jumped for joy because she had a Japanese voice bank, and it was amazing. Yeah, so, I love Xinhua's Japanese voice bank. Her pronunciation is not the best, but I love her design, and I love that she even has a power voice bank, which is really cool. So for me, Xinhua is going here. This is... Shenhua? No, that's from Genshin. Okay, so I had to look off screen because um, I am dumb and I forgot her name. Uh, it's Yenhe. She's okay. I don't get to hear her voice very often, which is why I completely forgot her name. So to me, she's here because I hardly hear her. Um, I don't think her voice is that great. Um, her design is okay you know yo -Hyo lloyd i love yo -Hyo lloyd yes he's not very powerful yes his voice provider is an asshole but you know what i still love yo -Hyo. um i love his design i love making coverage with him i like some of the memes people used to have back in the day that he was just like a huge weeb uh which was very funny and cute so for me, Yohyo is going here. This is uh, Yue Zhang Ling. I don't know why I didn't put her brother Longya here. I could have sworn I put her brother Longya here, but uh, let's just pretend they're a pair. I'm not a fan of Yue, Yue Zhang Li, J Ling, uh, but I love her brother Longya. I am looking respectfully at her brother Longya. Uh, however, both of them don't really impress me. And so for me, they're going here. Yumemi Memu is really interesting because she was like paired with Tone Rion. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Yumemi Memu, um, mostly because her voice is way too nasally that she sounds like a certain someone else on this list. Um, for me, Yumemi Memu, uh, I like her design. Uh, that's the only thing saving her from going anywhere lower. So this is, um, Yu. He is the last member of Zola Project. I love this design just because it looks so fun and goofy. It's really cute and I think kind of fits the vibe Yu is supposed to have in that he's kind of like the, I guess you could say the feminine-ish prompto of the group, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but it does to me. Not a fan of Yu's voice though, like I said, um, Zola Project has this problem where everyone besides Kyo, which is Yu and Will, um, they don't sound very good on their own, at least to me. So, um, but I like this design and a lot of fan designs, so for me, Yu goes here. Uh, next, Yuzuki Yukari, you all know, I love her design. Uh, she actually used to be one of my top tier Vocaloid voice banks. Um, the only thing that stops her is that her other voice bank, Lin, which is her power voice bank, is just a little metallic to me, but other than that, I love Yuzuki Yukari. Beautiful voice, beautiful character design, just a beautiful Vocaloid. I would actually love to cosplay her someday, so for me, she's going here. This is Fuido. Um, she's new. She just released um, a couple of weeks ago at the time of this recording, or a couple of months ago at the time this releases, um, because this is going to be a bitch to edit out on all my ums and ahs and drinking water and all that. <laughs> Fuido, to me, is disappointing because her design is fantastic, but then I heard her voice and I was like, that's it? Um, especially disappointing when I've heard her voice provider, uh, and she sounded really, really good. I don't know where they fucked up here, but they fucked up bad. So, I was extremely disappointed with Fuido. I feel like she had a lot of potential. And especially coming off of the back of Paul Uta's release, who just, like, kind of had an explosion on Twitter for a little bit. You know, it just feels disappointing. I don't know how to describe it. So she's going here. Love that design, but damn, that voice was really, really underwhelming. Wow. Finally is the mistake, Gachapoid. Uh, Gachapoid was made to promote a Vocaloid, uh, 
lesson class thing uh, for schools in Japan. Something about like the schools in Japan give like a baby version of Vocaloid to students who want to learn how to make music, which is cute. But then you have this monstrosity. I fucking hate Gachapoid's voice. He sounds so nasally. His Barney the Dinosaur looking ass isn't really that cute, at least to me. Uh, mostly because he just looks tired and done with everybody, so I don't know how children are supposed to gravitate towards it. And he just looks like a little shit. I love when people do memes kicking on this little fucker because I hate Gotcha Point. <laughs> to me, Gotcha Point is the lowest of the low. If I made any lower of a tier, it would just be called Gotcha Point Goes Here. But I'm not going to because I'm not that mean in my videos. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my Vocaloid tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I know that my tier list may not be something that everyone agrees with. Uh, as you can see, I put quite a few fan favorites in lower tiers. Um, I know Twitter's gonna rip me a new asshole for that one. Or at least my comment section's gonna rip me a new asshole for that one. <laughs> But still, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was fun to kind of just, you know, talk off the top of my head on how I feel about a lot of Vocaloids and just share my love of Vocaloid. Uh, in the description will be this tier list for you guys to use, but I will, of course, update it uh, so it is actually accurate because I put V Flower twice like a dumbass. I forgot Hime and I forgot Sonico for some reason. Or Sonica for some reason. So I don't know how the hell that happened. But still, hope you guys had fun watching this video. And let me know down below if you want me to do another tier list like this. These videos are really fun. Um, I'd love to do one on like Synthesizer V maybe. Definitely not Utao because there's just way too many. A lot of which I've never heard of before. And I'm not a big fan of the Chevio engine, so yeah, but still, you guys let me know down below what you think. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!